Hi everyone, today I want to show you what's on my soldering station. It's not a lot. A lot of the tools that I have are the ones that I got in the very beginning and I still use them today. And honestly, I didn't really need anything extra. I've added some bits and bobs, which I will show you in a second, that help me to be more efficient and solder faster and better. But honestly, everything that I have, which you can actually see <laughs> in this shot, everything that I have is so basic and honestly, I didn't feel the need to get anything else. However, there are certain things that I would love to get in the future when I have a proper space and I can upgrade like ventilation system or bigger torch because for now as you can see i only have the hand torch but yeah i will explain my reasons as to why my space looks like this uh, in a second so i hope you will enjoy watching it and yeah let's get started i have organized my soldering station on the left side of my bench which is the most comfortable for me. If I need to solder a lot, I will move the board to the center of my bench so it's right in front of me. But most of the time, I'm happy just to keep it on the left-hand side. My bench and my soldering station is placed in the corner of this room right next to the huge balcony doors which helped me to let the fresh air in and while I don't have a proper ventilation system which is important when you're soldering actually this still helps me to keep it a little bit better and protect me from the fumes so that's how I am working at the moment, but hopefully soon I will be able to upgrade and get a proper ventilation system too. Now let me show you each tool and what exactly I am using. Let's start with the setup. This soldering board came with the bench, which is brilliant because it's, it's a lot of space it's pretty large and I can place a lot of other soldering elements on top of it. I don't put it directly on my bench. I'm actually using this very basic baking tray on which I have placed this board. So the board isn't actually touching the bench directly. Then on top of that board, I am putting my spinning soldering board which I made myself. I have a video about making it. I will link it over here so check it out if you want to make one yourself too. And it's great because it's spinning and it honestly helps so much when you want to heat up your piece evenly. It's, it's perfect. So I would definitely recommend you getting one or making one. I think this is an amazing upgrade. And then on top of this spinning board, I have been using a charcoal brick, which is amazing, especially if you're working with a weaker hand torch, because this reflects the heat super well. As you can see, this one, <laughs> well, it's already a little bit worn down, but not to worry, I have a new one, which I purchased recently. I am going to open it probably today uh, to work on it. But this one, honestly, until it completely burns down, you can really work on it for a long time. And especially if you bind it with the binding wire, you can use it for so much longer because it keeps it in one piece like that. And at the moment, honestly, this is all I am using. Apart from that, I also have this type of board, which as you can see, had a little accident, but that's okay because it helps when, for example, I need something to place between it and hold it together. It's actually great to have something like that. Uh, I think some people break these on purpose to have like a different layers, different heights, so you can always support the metal you're working on. Please forgive me my dirty fingers from the charcoal brick. But yeah, so this is the one which I would also use sometimes. 
but my very first soldering brick was this one. It's a very, very simple brick, very cheap one. This is the one I got at Cooks on Gold, but I think this is available almost everywhere. And yeah, it was great, but obviously it doesn't reflect the heat as well as the charcoal block. So once I moved to this one, I, I never looked back, honestly. And this one is just sitting um, in the drawer below. But honestly, if you want to, you can place it over here, for example, and create like a, a little bit safer space for soldering. Or if your flame is big and you don't want it to go anywhere, you can always block it with additional brick like that. So that's also great to have. It's good to have several options because you can mix and match them, check what works for you, what doesn't. This is the basic set. There are other options, but I'm just showing you what I have and what I've been working on. And I really recommend this. And that's all I am soldering on. So these are all the surfaces I am soldering on. Now let's move on to tools that I'm using for soldering you will need the torch. And like I mentioned before, I am just using this very simple, small Dremel hand torch, which is filled with gas. And it's honestly really great and very strong. I have been using it since I started for some of the most complicated pieces that I've made and some larger ones. So I would say it's pretty powerful. However, if you can, it would be best if you could invest in a proper Smith's Little Torch, for example, which is definitely stronger and just your workflow would be completely different. But for now, I had to stick to this one because of the place we are renting. And it's been great, but yeah, I, I am looking very forward to finally getting a bigger, stronger torch. Of course, it is impossible to hold the metal that you're heating up in your bare hands. So that's why there is selection of different tools that you're using as your hands, honestly, when you're placing solder on the metal, when you're moving the metal around, when you're heating it up. So it's necessary to have all of these for different jobs. Uh, definitely one of the most important ones are reverse action tweezers, which can hold things, which can serve as a third hand, honestly, for you and keep something in place, in position when you're working on it. Another very important thing, for example, are these brass tweezers, which are perfect when you're placing things in the pickle because they won't contaminate the water and will keep your metal clean and safe. And they also don't really conduct the heat. I mean, they can get warm if you're heating them up for a long time, but most of the time when you're holding them like this to just move things around, they're completely safe uh, and they're not hot to touch. Then there are solar picks, for example, like these ones. The very first one that I had had wooden handle and it was bending so easily, <laughs> this top part. But these ones, these are from Pepe Tools and I'm very happy with them. The bigger one, which I started working with, it's very firm and it's just, you have a great hold and it's perfect, honestly. Then I have this smaller version and it's a set of three actually, but I started with the gold one because it goes well with the bigger one. It's super light. You honestly can't really feel it in your hand and it has a very pointed tip over here. Very fine, finer than this one. So I'm very happy with the two of them, been using them both. And then there's also this uh, new one, which is amazing. I think it's titanium and you can heat it up over here, but it doesn't conduct the heat. So this part here stays cool and you won't burn yourself and it doesn't bend when you heat it up which is also brilliant uh, sometimes when you have to push while you're soldering 
uh, it's important for your tool to not bend. So this is great. So obviously you can use the top part to pick the solder, place it where you need it. And you can use the bottom part, for example, to keep something in place to press on whatever you need to press on <laughs> and did I mention how light this is it's extremely light so it's also great to work with when you you don't really have to focus on it. it it just becomes part of your hand really then these tweezers I haven't been using them much but they are mostly for rings and they are just meant to keep your ring in place when you're soldering on it different details, for example, or you're soldering the band, but I haven't been using them too often really, so I wouldn't say they are something necessary that you have to have. And this little tool, I think it's great. It's made by Chris from Lion Punch Forge, who sent me this one as a gift with my initials, not, not initials, with my name on it. As you can see, he decorated it so nicely and I love it. It's personalized for me and I've been using it to keep uh, the pieces that I'm working on in one place. So it is also kind of like a third hand. It comes with the wire that you can shape to your needs. And then, for example, if you need to hold a detail in one place while you are soldering it and you don't want it to jump off or fall off, you can use this to essentially push on it and hold it in one place. And there are these little rings on it, like waves, which you can move to the top here to make it a bit heavier. And yeah, and because of the construction of this tool, this round base over here, you can see that you can move it as you wish and it will hold everything you want it to hold in one place. So this also has been a great help when I need to hold things in one place. And speaking of third hands, I also have this traditional third hand, which is basically this base and then you attach tweezers, reverse action tweezers onto it over here and you can also move it around and adjust it. So this is one of the first uh, tools that I got with all of the other soldering bits and it's always been super helpful. And when you're getting the tweezers, reverse action tweezers, make sure that you get the straight ones but also these curved ones because they actually do help a lot with some of the shapes. So yeah, these are the tweezers and solder picks that I've been using and I'm super happy with them. This is the best set that I've been using every day. Another essential tool, in my opinion, would be this binding wire, which is amazing because like I mentioned before, you can use it to bind your charcoal brick and keep it in one piece. But you can also make this little mesh to elevate the pieces that you're working on and then put it on the charcoal brick so that when you're heating it up like this, you can have some space between it and you can use the charcoal and the fact that it reflects the heat to hit it from the bottom without putting your flame directly onto the metal, but rather heating it from the bottom. So. This is great little thing which you can make every time you need it because after a while it can break. So I usually make one every month or every other month and that's what I use this binding wire for. You can also use binding wire to bind things together like metal pieces or a ring or things like that so it stays in one place and doesn't move around but honestly most of the time for that i'm using all of these tweezers and third hands rather than binding wire is just more comfortable and quicker to solder the metal you will need solder and i get mine in this form of a wire this is the easy wire this is hard wire and i also have a medium one somewhere in the drawer, <laughs> but I cut this into small pieces like this. I keep them in these little jars and whenever I need them, I will apply a little bits and bobs like this because you don't need a lot of solder to solder. If there's too much, 
you will have a lot of cleaning to do. So it takes some practice to figure out how much you will need for what job, but you will learn this with time and you will know exactly how much you need of them. And I also have this soldering paste. This is the easy one, this is the hard one, and I use it usually to just attach small embellishments like these little silver balls, things like that, like little tiny details that would jump off when soldering and are more tricky to solder. So these keep them in one place because you can stick little element to the solder paste and keep it in one place. For the solder to flow, you will need a solder paste. And to create the solder paste, I am using this borax cone and a dish. And to create the paste, I need to add just a tiny bit of water into the dish and then move the borax cone around to create a little white paste, which I then apply onto the metal wherever I need to solder and then I apply solder onto that place. And there are different ones out there. This is the one I am using. I've been using it since the beginning and honestly, it will last me for a very long time. This is the best part about this. But there are different uh, flux pastes out there. So check out with your supplier and there might be something else you'd be interested in. But this is the one I am using. And as a bonus, I have also been trying this fire scuff. It's a solution for soldering as well. You can sprinkle it over the metal to protect it from fire scale and it also works as a flux. So it's great, it's, it's not cheap, but I've been very happy with this little bottle and I think I will buy another one once I run out of this one. But yeah, it's a great stuff and it did protect the metal from fire stain. After soldering, you will need to quench the metal and you can do this in this little quenching bowl. As you can see, it's just a bowl with cold water and there's baking soda inside. Last step after soldering is to pickle your metal, which means to put it in a hot solution. I'm usually using this safety pickle solution, which I dissolve in water. I bought this at Cooks on Gold, it's called Pickling, and you add some of this into the water, which you can keep hot in the crock pot or in the glass bowl that you keep on the hot pot. There are different ways to do it. And yeah, this is the one I'm using and this is how you clean the metal. And last but not least, always remember the safety and use proper mask to keep yourself safe from all of the fumes because they are toxic. Solder is toxic, all of these pastes, they are toxic. So remember to use uh, protection like this. And this is the mask I'm using. It's by brand GVS. And this is the small size. You can change the filters in here. And it's really great. It's not very heavy. It's quite comfortable, but there's honestly a lot available out there from 3M and other brands, so check it out. And another bit of equipment would be protective glasses like these ones, just in case metal jumps or something happens, you don't want it to land in your eye. So this is what I have. And yeah, this is my soldering station. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any suggestions in the comments below or if there's anything you're using and you think I should start using too. Let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts. And thank you so much for tuning today. I will see you in the next one. Bye. The dust of moss and the taste of lust.